Thank you very much. Um, as Gavin said, um, I'm uh, Richard Clark. My actual um, job title is Managing Editor for the Arsenal Media Group, the digital arm of Arsenal Football Club. There's a Twitter tag there and um, a hashtag if you want to talk to me afterwards or talk to me even during. Please say nice things if you would. Um, I asked Gavin uh, in that phone call, I said, what do you want me to talk about? He said, well, just talk about what you do all day. So here's seven minutes of me surfing the internet and drinking coffee, basically, it seems. But, uh, um, uh, what I decided to do was give you a quick thumbnail sketch of uh, what we do at Arsenal uh, Football Club in terms of our digital strategy. Now, we are obviously a football club, but um, we uh, have many arms to our business now. We're a hospitality business, a conferencing business, and we're also a media business, a content business, a news business as well. Uh, it's a, it's a, a wide market these days with, with Sky and, 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 uh, and the traditional English newspapers and increasingly the internet encroaching into um, uh, traditional media's territory and club media is growing and we are hopefully in the vanguard of that. So here's what we have. We have a website, um, obviously apps, our social media, a match day program, which is a match day magazine, official magazine. They are traditional publications. And our television show, it's a three hour show, uh, we used to have a channel, we don't have a channel anymore, I'll come to why in a second. Um, all that is done in HD, all that is done in-house. In, in, in and over the past 18 months we have uh, created a team in-house uh, to make that content. We, we think if we love it ourselves and we make it high, high quality in terms of being HD, it sells. And, and the market has told us that is true. Here's our strategy, very, very simple. Reach, engage and monetize. Football's a simple game. That's a simple strategy. I'm a slightly eccentric in English, so I'm going to go for the middle one first, which is engage. Here, if I can play it, is what I determine to be a boring video. Everyone's playing you interesting videos. I'm going to play you a boring one. Here goes. Um, that's, that was a minute of Thierry Henry playing, uh, barely actually kicking a football. We got 200,000 plays of that uh, in, in a morning, even though he didn't actually play any football. All he did was practice. He, ra he, he ran around, basically. But because we have that uh, uh, internal angle on the club, we can give the fans something they won't get anywhere else. And we trade on this. And this is... Um, my point. We can give uh, the, the insider's view of the club and we also are the, are the, uh, the legitimator for news. That's why I talk about tone of voice. We get this a lot. It's only official when it's on Arsenal.com. We announce, for example, transfer signings. So, uh, but we won't talk, talk uh, we won't report as news the speculation leading up to that transfer. So we, we might know something is going on, but we are not going to report that because it doesn't fit with the uh, overarching values of our football club. But what we do trade on is our tone of voice being for, um, it's kind of a highfalutin phrase really, but uh, a beacon of truth, I suppose. It's only true if it's on arsenal.com. That's a little bit of a highfalutin phrase. But um, here's an obvious example. Andrea Sharvin, cracking little Russian player. Plays on the left side of midfield. We were about to sign him. Uh, it's all over Sky, all over the newspapers in England. And um, uh, the transfer deadline was January the 31st. So as you would expect, on January 31st and February 1st, we got a lot of traffic because, yet again, we are the uh, legitimators of this, um, uh, this story. It's only official when it's on Arsenal.com. Over, over those two days, we got... Um, one and a half million uniques uh, coming to um, uh, Arsenal.com. But that story didn't go up until February 2nd. So we had all these people clicking on, trying to get the news, and yet we weren't actually providing them with it, um, which just proves to me, um, in, a, in a world in, in which, um, a, a football world in which speculation has always been a massive part and Twitter and the in internet has just blown that up massively. If you stand out as this 
beacon of truth. I've really got to find a better phrase for that. But if you stand out as a, as, 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 as a, as a news organization that is going to offer the truth, you can actually get eyeballs as well. Um, so this is our editorial strategy. It's based on authority, credibility, relevance, and love. Everyone's talked about engagement. I think in terms of football, you talk about love. It's, it's not engagement. You don't have a choice to go anywhere else. In my opinion, you are born an Arsenal fan. There is no choice. Um, and we treat fans as if they love the club, and we reflect that love back. Um, and I also, I put foremost more than first at the top. It's difficult in the Twitter world to be first with the news, but we can be foremost with the news in the sense that we legitimate it as I, as I spoke about before. Let's go back to our strategy. I'm now talking about reach. This is how we reach people, all the usual ways. Um, we're on all those platforms except for Android, which is coming, and Connected TV I'll talk about later. Let's talk about Twitter. Uh, we've got 1.5 million uh, Twitter followers. We're the highest in the Premier League, the third highest um, in Europe. But it's a, it's a, it's a one-way conversation at the moment. Um, in the sense that we give you the news. Here's the news, here's a bit.ly link. Here's the news, here's a bit.ly link. What we're trying to do now is dialogue and make that two-way. It's a, it's a step up for us. I'm aware that time is ticking, so I'll go through that one. We're back onto our strategy. So I've done reach, I've done engage. Let's move to monetize. Uh, three basic arms here. Our membership scheme, uh, which is ticketing, uh, was basically about ticketing, so in order to buy a ticket, you could either register to buy a ticket, be a season ticket holder, be a box holder, be a diamond club holder with the best seats in the house. That's fine if you're in the, in the UK. doesn't resonate if you're abroad. We rolled digital media into that uh, concept, so it gave you value if you're abroad. Uh, uh, abroad, you'd be an Arsenal fan, you grew up an Arsenal fan, you could also buy a ticket. We've got partnerships as well. They increasingly are buying into our social media. And our strategic media partner with MP, uh, a great company called MP and Silver, because uh, that is where our international TV show goes. 22 different broadcasters, 200 million homes around the world. And just finally, in my final 10 seconds, let's talk about where we're going in the future. We binned our uh, linear TV channel, but we are moving into um, uh, the TV at world with a combination of uh, high quality on demand content, key live events done in HD, absolutely crucial, interactivity absolutely crucial. Global audience, just check. We got phone calls from Oklahoma and Sydney. This is our VR studio, a phone-in show that we do. Um, especially moving into China in terms of that global audience, which will follow on to the tour uh, that, we are, that, that the team is undertaking in the next month. I'm going out with the team to China. And finally, niche is good. We know that Arsenal fans, being an Arsenal fan, is, is a niche in terms of global sport and global media, but we hope to grow them with digital media, and I'd like to think I've made a couple more this afternoon or this morning with what I've said. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is quickly over here. Thank you. We're a little bit into the break, but I, I do want to ask if there's any questions for Richard. Kate. Oh, that's please don't quote me on that. <laughs> So the, so the question is that you say you are this person or this beacon of truth, which you're going to change, oh, yeah. but um, if people come and they don't find the information, even though they know that the trade has been done, are you not sort of, is your authenticity not being broken down? Because they're saying, why are you holding back? Are you, you, tr are you, are you, are you baiting me? Don't you risk um, pissing off your, your customers? It, it, yeah, it, it is an issue, and we, and we get that a lot. Um, however, uh, the... The speculation that will be in, for example, the tabloid press in England and Sky Sports News, which is, is, a, is a very, uh, it, it deals in speculation and things like that. Um, uh, it would be giving away the club's position if we were to comment well, let, on that, spe that let speculation. Let me ask you this. And we have to why, did, why did you guys wait an extra day? Pardon? Like, why did you put it out February 2nd when you knew the trade had done February because, 1st? Because that's when the deal was actually officially done. That was when the signature was on the piece of paper. So did you actually have video of him signing? or We couldn't. We were, allowed to, we were not allowed to do it, but we asked. But you asked. We're okay. a very, very traditional football club, and we are trying to, in our digital media, uh, expand into different areas and, uh, and develop that a little bit more. But football clubs particularly because those in England, are quite conservative. In, in the UK, football is religion. It's really the new religion. So the, this, uh, someone signing it is like tantamount to someone signing a UN document, right? If you see a player signed, and that sort of... I guess the last question I have for you is... You've done it since, incidentally. You've done it since, yeah. okay. So you really, this shift that's happening, and why I was really interested to have you come and speak here, is that you're a journalist by trade, Correct. right? You saw five or six years ago, and you decided to go to Arsenal. 
you essentially are breaking news. You're doing everything that a, a traditional tabloid or a traditional um, a newspaper might do. What things can you not do? What happens when things go bad, right? When, when something happens at Arsenal and you can't talk about it, right? And, and, and every, it's all over the other papers. Where's your authenticity then? How do you twist it? Because obviously, Arsenal, if a player goes and does something and, and everybody knows about it, but you're not willing to talk about it, how, how do you make that decision of, of, of giving the authenticity when it's bad for the club? Okay, well, for, first of all, we will um, talk to our communications department about the way that they want to approach it. And uh, normally, Arsenal are very good in, in, in communicating as much as they can. But as I say, you are, to a certain extent, uh, fighting against the, the conservatism of football clubs and you have to accept that every little nuance particularly in with with the British press can be can be twisted and pulled out right. a, a, a little bit so you have to accept that uh, that conservative conservatism and just sort of expand expand as as the market and the uh, viewers and the uh, and the site visitors expect you to thank you very much